A, a little breaking news to lead off Sports Sunday tonight. Blake Sims had his quarterback tryout yesterday with the Green Bay Packers. The Pack decided not to sign him. That's okay, though, according to his agent. Sims is set to join the Washington Redskins rookie camp as a running back. So there's still a chance for Blake Sims to catch on in the NFL. With that, we say welcome in, everyone, to Sports Sunday. A little abrupt start, but that's okay. We're off and running. I'm BJ Milliken alongside Jen Chapman. And, Jen, a great ending for the Auburn Tigers softball team last night. They won the SEC tournament title. Alabama, though, still alive to have a good ending as well. That's right. That was Auburn's first SEC title, That's and right. it was Selection Sunday for all of softball tonight. Alabama was one of 64 teams who heard their name called. They had to wait a while, but when it was finally their Man, turn, Georgia. Alabama found out that it had earned the number six national seed and will host the Tuscaloosa Regional beginning on Friday. Here's who is paired up with the Tide. Fairfield, USC Upstate, and the Washington Huskies. Pat Murphy was glad the Tide would play again after Bama's tournament loss to Auburn. Well, thank God we have another game, you know, and I hope it makes everybody hungry and more determined and show a little bit more grit because we didn't do enough of that today. I mean, I didn't see much fight even, even down the stretch. I really thought we were going to do something in the last inning, and, you know, unfortunately it was three up, three down, but it, our seniors get to play again at home. And we, we pretty much know that, but that's a good feeling that they get to play another game. We get to stay with Team 19 for another week. And, um, you know, Sunday night, other than Christmas Day or St. Patrick's Day, is the best day of the year. <laughs> it's Selection Sunday. Here is the Friday schedule one more time. If Alabama gets out of their regional, they're paired with the Oklahoma Sooners for a super regional next week. The SEC led the way with 11 teams selected, including top seed Florida and 14 seed Auburn. So the SEC baseball tournament is just a couple of weeks away. And for Alabama, the time to get hot is now. This is the best time. Not only were they trying to qualify for the SEC tournament, but they were going for a little history on down on the plains today in game three against the Auburn Tigers. But before the game, Mitch Gaspard released this statement on injured first baseman Chance Vincent. He confirmed that Vincent did have a partially separated shoulder, but returned to the team. He's out indefinitely for the Tide baseball team. Now, Alabama came in winners of four in a row, looking for a fifth and doing it with some defense. Casey Houston, or as Jen likes to call him, Hugston. Hugston. Watch the catch here. Hug it. He hugged it. Hit the wall there as well. <laughs> Hug the wall a little bit. Uh, but it wouldn't be the best even to play today. We'll talk about that later. Bama Bats have been impressive this weekend. Up 3-0. Will Haney's two-run shot puts Bama up five. But Auburn down just 6-4 in the seventh bases loader. Remember how I said there was a better one? Georgie! Oh! Georgie Salem stretches out, saves three runs. What a play. Bama erupted for 14 runs in a 14-4 win. And here's some history for you folks. The sweep is Alabama's first at Auburn since May of 1983, way back when the number one song in the country was Just Beat It. Just, Just beat, beat It. Michael Jackson, everybody. We Alabama beat play. the Tigers to the tune of 33 hits and 25 runs the last two games. Pretty impressive stuff. The Nats were trying to finish off a sweep of the Braves as well. And Bryce Harper, hey, he's still hot. His bat, that is. Here's the <laughs> long RBI double. I thought it was going to go out there. That gave the Nats an early lead. Bottom of the eighth, though, tied up at four. Guess what? Not tied anymore. Wilson Ramos sends this one into the corner. A run comes around. That would prove to be the game winner. Nats beat Braves 5-4. to four. You said it. I didn't. Last night, there was more history. The Pirates turned a 5 Four, five, triple play against the Cardinals. That's second base to third base, and then back to second base for those scoring at home. This is the first recorded five, four, five triple play in Major League history. So how about that? Well, LeBron James and the Cavs trying to avoid a 3-1 hole in the Eastern Conference semis against the Bulls. He was, wasn't was getting kingly treatment earlier either. He twists his ankle on this play. He says after the game, it was pretty bad. And it looks like it there. He was on the ground for a while. But he, of course, he stayed in the game. And the game tied 1.5 left. LeBron, LeBron nails the game winner, doing LeBron things right there at the buzzer. The series is tied at two games apiece. They shift back to Cleveland on Tuesday. Saturday was a great day for a former Alabama Crimson Tide golfer as Justin Thomas recorded a record 10 birdies in the third round at TPC Sawgrass. That's right, but sometimes 
the momentum just doesn't carry over. And unfortunately for Justin, it didn't. They did have uh, pretty flowers, though, there on the course for Mother's Day. That was nice. Thomas was playing well early. Here he is on four, draining yet another birdie. But he'd be saying, Mother, the rest of the day. He shoots a three over, putting, putting him well out of contention. Your winner is Ricky Fowler in a sudden death three-man playoff of Sergio Garcia and Kevin Kistner. He closed the tournament with four birdies and an eagle, so that's not too bad for Ricky. And there's Justin Thomas finishing tied for 24th for the tournament. That nets him around eh, $81,000, so not a bad payday for four rounds of golf. Still that's pretty good. Sure, that's right. Now, still to come on Sports Sunday, a lot including the eagerly awaited winner of the SpongeBob race from last night. Will you include the voices from last night? Maybe. We'll see. Potentially. We'll have to, we'll have to wait. <laughs> and when we get come back, we'll get to go one-on-one -on -one again. I was able to talk with former Howard College basketball player Jim Harrison. You want to see some basketball footage from the 1950s? Then stay with us. His story coming up next in One-on-One -on -one with Jen. We're back on Sports Sunday. You know, in the mid-1950s, Alabama basketball made a coaching change. They brought in Johnny D from Notre Dame. He brought all eight of his Fighting Irish players to Tuscaloosa and cleared the current Tide roster out. Those guys later became known as the Rocket Eight. Jim Harrison was just a freshman on the Tide team, and at that time, he was left to find a new program. He didn't go very far, finding his new place at Howard College, now known as Sanford University. This past season, Jim Harrison was honored for a school record he still holds to this day. He's this week's one-on-one -on -one with Jen. I love basketball, and if I got a chance to shoot it, I shot it. And that game, I, I kept getting open, shooting the ball, and it just kept going in. Um, and I nearly fainted when they told me how many points they ended up. 82-year-old Jim Harrison reminiscing about January 6, 1956, when Harrison scored a Sanford University record 48 points in the Bulldogs' win over the Chattanooga Mocs. That would screen for me to come off of and shoot a jump shot. And... Uh, it just screamed for me and I'd come off shoot a jump shot. The nearly 60-year-old record is even more impressive when you consider there was no three-point line at the time Harrison played the game. I can't do that arithmetic, of course, looking back, but that's where I shot the ball from. So it would be, it would be a good number. You want to guess what number you think it would be? No, I, I don't know. It'd have to be in the 60s. I mean, I don't know. It'd have to be at least that basketball now is the emphasis on defense, which is very smart. And I think it's changed the game a lot. Um, I mean, it was, defense was important then, but today it's very important. And it's changed the game a good bit. While playing for Sanford, known as Howard College at that time, Harrison met and married his wife, had their first son, and graduated from pharmacy school. But there was no question where he would return. I would have never lived anywhere else. When I was dating my wife, I told her, I hope you're going to like Tuscaloosa because we ain't never going to live anywhere else. You know what? She told me this, that you said that. Yeah, and I meant that. <laughs> if we were going to get married, that had to be understood. Why? Oh, it's just such a great place to live. I mean, it's not too big. It's not, well, it's getting pretty big, but it's not too big. It's not too little. The people living in the south. Harrison's father owned a pharmacy in T-Town and thought his son should have his own. Their family company, Harco, forever changing the pharmacy business in Alabama. And so I came back and we opened a store on the university campus right across from where the SAE house is. Uh, it's gone now. But we ended up with the help of a lot of wonderful people. We ended up expanding that company. And when we sold it to Rite Aid, we had 150 drugstores. With the pharmacy school at Auburn, named after Jim Harrison Sr., and their roots in Tuscaloosa, the Harrison family cheers War Eagle and Roll Tide. Harrison thinks the Crimson Tide program is headed in the right direction with new coach Avery Johnson. He's so uh, live and into things. I mean, I, I believe he's going to be good. To have a man like that that has the background he has, has the 
personality that he has. I'd be very surprised if he's not successful. And that's going to take him a little while. He's going to have to recruit some people. So I hope that everybody understands. He won't go out there the first year and beat everybody. But I believe they got him a good man. And a good man in Jim Harrison, more than a record holder, a positive influence on the Tuscaloosa community. Mr. Harrison was an absolute pleasure to meet. He told me a neat story that his dad bought the first drugstore by his wife um, making all these sandwiches. They brought them to campus and sold them on campus to students. Eventually, the University of Alabama called them and said they couldn't do that anymore. But they saved <laughs> money from that to help buy for the first drugstore. They must have been good sandwiches. It's awesome. Great stuff there. Good family. Stay tuned for more Sports Sunday. The winner of the best trophy in NASCAR history is next. That and our favorite things after the break. Stay with us.